Whoop! Hi guys, this is your boy Martin, and today another installation video, and a little bit of talking as well, and some test with that wooden brick. So what's this video all about? We'll be throwing in uh, after we have thrown in the sway bar, uh, the the strongest and and thickest and the longest from H and R. We will also throw in the springs because we have super weak Kabaya shocks here, and they are just terrible. So these springs, they have. 72% better compression rate and in the video what you will find out I'll tell you a little bit more like what you can expect from this upgrade uh, you will see how to do the installation very very easy very fast and at the end we will do a dummy test uh, so we will put a wooden brick there and you will see like how the movement from side to side has changed uh, I will not go for a ride because me going for a ride and telling you that it's a hell good of an upgrade doesn't make any sense so now short video because you can hear I can barely talk good for you let's get started right now a uh, couple of upgrade updates before uh, we go to the installation very frequent question I have Martin this or Wilbur's I mean look these H&R shocks or shocks, these H&R springs, they're made in Germany, super high quality, 72% better compression rate. That means they are 72% better and faster than the springs that you have now on those terrible Kabaya shocks on all F3, F3 T, F3 Limited and RT20 plus models. Plus it comes with a road health and safety, you now the road legal certificate because it's a German brand. Um, but if I have to be super honest, you just, you, you can't compare upgrade like Wilbur's that it's a full shock, uh, and it's worth on RT20 plus with one centimeter, uh, we can one centimeter raise the bike that it costs, let's say 1,200 euros. You cannot compare it with changing just the spring that it's worth 350. Is it four times better? No. Is it better in general? I would say yes. Okay. But we already do have sway bar on this bike and we were throwing these springs because for that money, it's a badass upgrade. Now the bike with those terrible Kabaya shocks. All right, so let's do the dummy test. That side has a H&R spring. That side has a stock spring and we will throw in this wooden brick and have a look. Like, I don't have to even try hard and uh, you can see how, how weak the springs are. Now, if you put it here, like, like I'm bouncing with my two feet. And we are not touching it at close. Uh, more heavier the bike is, and now you have to understand, Kenem has signed a deal and they are throwing in these Kabaya shocks to F3 and F3S models. No more Fox shocks, which been also terrible. Uh, all F3T that they are not making anymore and, and all limited, limited special series on all RT20 plus models, they do have the same shocks. And more heavier the bike is, more noticeable it is how the bike leans from side to side. The most craziest thing I have seen, it's two up. And of course, it, it's about like how heavy it is the rider and passenger. <laughs> I have seen some heavy riders riding RT20 Plus and um, that thing was leaning from side to side. Super, I would say even, even it was even dangerous. And we were still able to put these springs and they are riding super good. So uh, that was the thing I, I just wanted to say. So these things will fit to all F3 T limited, limited special series RT20 plus. Now one thing, we have different solution for F3 and F3S prior to 2022. That upgrade is a very popular and super selling item. Now. My honest advice, this spring is not for F3 and F3S. We have it as an option on the shop. 
but I don't recommend it that much when in case you have Kabaya shocks because those shocks and that compression rate is a little bit too much for the quite light F3 and F3S okay so this upgrade it's for T limited and RT20 plus models it suits the best right now I'm, I'm further in the in installation process and we will get there how I did this but my my story I need to tell you like, can you see uh, the difference and uh, how thick this one is compared to this one uh, how how more like you have those rounds more frequently than in here I think it's pretty obvious now I can't talk much but obvious question can be will this not be super hard will this not create a bumpy ride because it, it can feel like like riding on rocks, right? Martin the vlogger is saying like this one is 72 percent better in terms of compression rate. Right? Now the answer is of course not like we don't I don't want to sell you something that will create from your bike something that will be not enjoyable. So what this will give you? Well better compression rate, why it is important and nobody will exactly tell you how thick these springs are, what is the real compression rate, and other info, important informations because there is a lot of testing behind, uh, a lot of ups and downs, and this is the perfect balance for F3 T, F3 Limited, and special limited special series and RT20 plus. Okay, again I say, not for F3 and F3S with Kabaya shocks. I mean you can buy it, but it's gonna be a little bit tough. All right, better compression rate. Right? What does it really mean? And how I can say, like, you can still, you will still have the good comfort. It's because the shock is still moving up and down. It will still give you that comfy ride. But instead of that, our weak stock shock that doesn't like to move much, or moves a lot, I would say, sorry. Um, this one just, if there is a bump, if there is like, you know, whatever on the road, this one, the stock one, you will hit the pothole or whatever and the stock one will be like shall I go up or shall I go down well maybe I will go down now and you are farther further away from the bump this will, re will react much more faster basically it will go down to the bump and up so basically your wheel is constantly with the road and that's what the, it's very important okay also in the corners you will not lean that much but still your bike will have great handling possibilities your bike will not slide that much on the front that actually creates nanny to step in you know and if you're riding too up it's just massive game changes so uh, i don't know if i have explained it well but it's a faster shock at least the same comfort as you used to just the handling will be much more improved last important info no laser alignment it's needed you simply just change it and you go for a ride so what we'll need for the job is a couple of wrenches i'll explain you this electrical tape a little bit later you will need a wrench like this size 15 so you can get better to the to the bolts on the, on the top uh, spring compressors of course two it's enough sometimes I'm using three it really depends uh, what's my day and how bad is my day and of course the lift now, in terms of the lift where you can use it well sometimes I'm using it here so there is a like a ring and if I don't because for the for the job we just need to not really to raise the bike it's not the point point is just to tiny bit lift it so there is uh, not that big pressure on bolts so you can remove them so here it's all fine or of course it's much better under the whole bike there is a thick uh, frame body part that goes all from the front to the back and you can use it there so that's the first thing we're going to do and as you can see the bike is still on the ground we just need it to lift and release the pressure from the shock. Now, what I will use, I will use size 15. 
and I will, I'm also using the extender. Now this one will go from, from this side. I'm too lazy to remove uh, this panel. It's not really needed in case you have good tools. And from the other side, we will need to use this one because otherwise you will be not able to get to the bolt on the top, all right? And we will need to remove bolts on the top and of course this one on the bottom. Now the trick here is, and hopefully you'll be able to see it, in case you move this, uh, where it is, in case we will move this, there is a bolt. Not sure if you can see it, I'm just touching it with my finger. And the only way how you can get there is with the next hand, all right? So let's remove that bolt. And now the bolt, as you can see, it's here and doesn't want to go up, all right? Don't do anything crazy. All you have to do is either raise the bike a little or lower it a little. So there will be almost zero pressure and you will be able to pull it out. Now, this is the most difficult job and most dangerous job because we will need to compress the springs in order so we can remove the, uh, the cap and remove the spring and change it. Now, of course, we'll be compressing it so there is an enormous pressure and if you will do something wrong, uh, it can bounce and it can actually hurt you or you can put the finger in. Like it, so many things can happen, so really be careful. Now, why I'm using duct tape or else you could say it, is because I'm taping these spring compressors. Now, in case you need to buy one, uh, buy motorcycle spring compressors. Don't do uh, car spring compressors because they are much bigger and you will scratch your front shocks. Uh, and I'm duct taping them, so we're creating a slight or almost none of the scratches to your, I don't care about the old ones but on your new, uh, new springs, all right? Maybe tiny bit of tibets, uh, to one side, and then do a little bit of the other one, and like this, until you will not release this thing, basically, so you can move it out and remove the, the spring, and be super careful, and if something goes on the side, uh, rather do it again. Like don't worry to start again because this can this is really can be really dangerous. Now, as you can see, like you can now freely move it. Uh, I don't want to talk a lot because honestly, this is one of those jobs that I don't like that much and I have very big respect for. So there you go, it works like this. Right? And then the other one, just like this. Now you need to remove the spring compressors. Again, one side and then a little bit of one side, a little bit of the other. And this is your spring at the moment, and we're gonna replace that with this one. Can you see how bad boy this is? It's a little bit smaller, but don't worry about it because the compression rate is much higher, so the spring will naturally doesn't will not shrink that much, you know. And have a look how thick it is. Uh, amazing. Now this is your like standard adjuster. Remove it. And put there this one. Uh, this is something well you will not need to do on all T's. This is only for F3 T unlimited. And take the rubber hammer and go all the way down. Now 
Now, as you can see, uh, it must be all the way from the marks that you have had before. Now put our new spring in, doesn't matter which way, I like to keep the, you know, the names this way or the branding. Okay, so this is our top and of course we need to compress them so we can squeeze in these two things. I'll put this in. And they compress and that's it. So my thing how to put the shock bag is put it inside like this. Now rotate it. Leave it under the bottom A arm. Find its place and just squeeze that in. And you're good to go. All right. Put the bolt in to secure the first hole. And now struggle with the second one now we have a ball and end cap there i like to keep the uh, you know the brand like this in case you didn't do it you can rotate it quite quite easy it's quite possible and now all i have to do it let's tie it now don't be super crazy just tie it how it was before i know it's Quite complicated to say like how tight it is, but I would say just just so. All right, so let's do the dummy test. That side has a H and R spring. That side has a stock spring, and we will throw in this wooden brick and have a look. Like I don't have to even try hard, and. Uh, you can see how, how weak the springs are. Now, if you put it here, like, like I'm bouncing with my two feet and we are not touching it that close. Come with me so you can believe me. Have a look. Both feet standing there, dancing. And that brake is not uh, moving an inch. <sighs> so you see guys, now I need to do all this on the other side and same as you in case you are doing the installation. And we'll do one more test to see uh, the clearance level, it has, if it has changed or not. Now let's do the dummy test with the wooden brake. Uh, I'll put it on a longer side under the bike. And this one in the middle, all right, here is a plastic pin and with the stock shocks, I can, I can fit in my, my finger uh, just so, okay? So let's see how this will change with the uh, H&R spring, how the height has changed or if it has changed. And basically, I can do absolutely the same thing. Maybe like, like really micro that it's higher, but uh, it would be not really noticeable on the on the street. Now, well, guys, this is oh, pretty much it from the installation, uh, from what it is all about. Uh, you can see I'm throwing in, I'm throwing it on a bike that it's for tour and rental purposes, and that's how much I do believe in this upgrade. This is it from today's episode. Uh, installation, a little bit about like what the thing can do for you on martindevlogger.com slash shop we have handling box that is a bundle that makes you save something like 50 euros on the strongest sway bar the longest and the thickest sway bar with two holes the only sway bar that has two holes actually four 
all together in the world and together with Springs, you can save some extra money. Nobody else is selling this and shipping worldwide. Guys, thank you very much for watching and remember, enjoy your summer, improve the handling and always have fun.